Doctors, uh, yeah, welcome to the GNM online webinar. I really happy to be in this Hello. GNM. Good evening, madam. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yeah, madam, uh, Gayatri, madam, will you start the session or will shall we wait for two, three more minutes? Hello, your voice is not uh, Gayatri, ma'am. Your mic is. Uh, yeah. Shall we yeah. shall we start the session? Yeah, yeah madam. Uh, I think so. It is almost twenty one, twenty two participants are there. Okay. Yeah, it is exactly four. So yeah, according to so. the Indian punctuality, maybe uh, they'll be joining a bit late. Shall we so, start? I'm yeah, ready. Madam, uh, kindly, kindly, I, I request you to please start the session, madam. I request all to kindly mute your mics. Thank you. Yeah. Namaste to all. Good evening. I welcome you all wholeheartedly to my little talk on GNM today. But with a heavy heart, doctors, let me condole the people, the soldiers, who are safeguarding us on the borders. Just for 30 seconds, we will all mourn for them who have died. I don't say died. Oh, viratva hai. Jo, jo, jaan de diya hai vatan ke liye. Un sare shaheed soldiers ke liye, ek 30 second apne vakt se nikal ke, unke bereaved families ko families ke saath apni support zarur hai. Isliye, let's condole the people, the Jat battalion, the 20 soldiers, my goodness, see the conflicts their families would be going through. Let's for 30 seconds be calm and then I will start my speech. Friends, with a heavy heart, let me speak something about my nation. I'm proud to be the citizen of India. Mera Hindustan sabse mahan hai. This I say with great pride on my heart, with my heart open. India is a cradle of human race, birthplace of human speech, the mother of history. We have made lots of histories, the grandmother of legend and great-grandmother of tradition. In India, you are taught that there are certain qualities that make you divine. India is one of the holistic, oldest civilizations in the world with an Kaleidio spoke variety of rich cultural heritage. Many of the advances in the science that we consider today to be born in Europe and elsewhere were in fact made in India centuries, centuries ago. India may offer a way of life, the lifestyle, provides a vision of natural and real way of life. India conquered and dominated China culturally some 20 years without spending a single soldier. Friends, teri baho mein meri rahat hai Teri kadmo mein meri jannat hai. He ma Hindustan hai jai hind. Mother India, such a wonderful place we all share here. My heart felt condolences to those uh, revived families and the soldiers. Hope you all are with me, right? With this small word, doctors, I start my session today speaking on the biological laws of GNM. In the last webinar, we have discussed the cases. 
right? We have discussed one wonderful case. Now, with in continuation with that, we will be going, going to talk the second biological law. I'm going to share my screen with you all. One second, my screen is being shared. Okay. Yeah, doctors. Yeah, I welcome you all. Today we are going to discuss the conflicts cases with second biological law. As I have condoled uh, the soldiers, Mera Bharat Mahan hai. The conflict rises when there is sudden commotion, when there is sudden uh, what do you say, uneasiness or why this happens? Generally, friends, when we are sent after marriage, the females, you should get imbibed in their family and see that everything is fine in their family. Yeah, it is very true. That is the culture of India, where we, the girls, we go to another family and see that we make them happy, we make the generation of that family. But when some uh, uneasiness is in that family, then sab ulta pulta hota hai and the conflict starts. The conflict starts in a girl's life when what she has expected if she is not getting, that is maybe the love of the husband. Maybe the hold in the family, the territorial anger, many, many conflicts are developed like this. But let me share my opinion with you all doctors. I, uh, even my father said that you are the candle. A female is a candle where she needs to give a light, bring up the family. And simultaneously he has also told me that you should not only be like in family, but a torch to society. I am proud to share this quote of Bernard Shaw, who says, I am of an opinion that my life belongs to the community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can do. Want to be thoroughly used up when I die. I agree with this gentleman. The same way, with that zeal, I am coming forward to speak what I know. Right? 
so it should be the life is no more a candle to me it is an sorry yeah it is an harder i work the more i live life is no brief candle to me it is a sort of splendid torch which i have got hold for a moment and i want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to the future generations friends i share this quote of bernard shaw and i humbly bow before you all that i love to share my views to the community and work for the community and today that is the reason i am before you all conflicts cases with biological law of gnm here i stand before you dr gayatri devi submitting myself in continuation of the last session with gnm understanding where we have done the first biological law now let's continue the second biological law it's a thrill learning gnm friends that's why i have put an gnm therapist because after taking the case and after giving the medicine leave leave all that but when understanding a person how beautifully the gnm explains you thoroughly enjoy your practice this is a word i i give my word to you that you will definitely understand uh, your patient very nicely and your practice will improve you will become the better homeopath with all respects and thanks i acknowledge to all these people who stood by me in all means of supporting friends nothing is too wonderful to be true it is inconsistent with the law of nature yes it is the law of nature which keeps us tight but what is it that we are doing to the nature let's go back it's not an i, I don't it is not an emotional talk i am talking uh, friends but it is the thing where we are losing ourselves to get something and to get something and when we are not achieving we are conflicted yes yeah see here the nature it's so beautiful isn't it aur chidiyon ki chah chahat the jarno mein jo pani ka ahat wo yahan yahan se wahan jo you see all that meadows which are moving and the crickets the grasshoppers when you go out to see in the village you enjoy the nature nature is itself so beautiful that kitna madhur hai ma prakriti yes mother is always beautiful yes she never expects anything back from her speech uh, from her children it is only we try to we try to change the situations which are with our inventions which are with our discoveries uh, and we are spoiling ourselves like for instance we are it's a story mohini basmasur where a basmasur is an rakshas he is an asur he takes an boon from lord shiva saying that whatever he doesn't wants he can just put his hand and destroy it because out of out of want and finally he destroys itself human has become so greedy they want to par the nature which is not possible yes here and with this what we are doing we are losing our biological clock we are losing the rhythmically whatever is in the nature we have lost that rhythm of morning and night we are haphazardly we sleep haphazardly we eat that is because of our maybe our work timings maybe our lifestyle whatever it is but we are paying for it yes hope you all are with me yeah what is happening when everything goes rhythmically the nature itself is the best physician this is well said by hippocrates if you follow the nature you get up you eat you defecate yes you sleep the uh, you eat you sleep you defecate that is the law of nature or you you learn you earn you burn them but when you catch that holding or instead of burning them when you hold them there comes the conflict there you your ego starts there your territory starts there the fighting starts and if you lose again you are conflicted if you are not if you can't make the competition out you are again conflicted 
Yes, the same thing which we talk about the sora, psychosis and syphilis in homeopathy. Like you take birth, you perish and you flourish. But in this beach, what happens is that it happens to be a lot of anger. If you just leave life like that, no person would be conflicted. But how is it? It's not possible. Na? We are not gods and demigods, right? Yeah, because every person is conflicted. Even now, when I, before I start my program, I'm conflicted. I'm with anxiety. How would my program start? Will the electricity department, uh, will it give me the current or suddenly there's a current off? Or will some other disturbance come? What is it? Everyone is conflicted, friends. It's not so easy that uh, we, uh, we are conflictless. But we need to learn that being conflicted also, how to resolve, right? Because if the conflict continues, the diseases continue. Where, but in GNM, we don't call them diseases. We call the biological special programs. This we will, detail, this we will discuss in due course. Yeah. Again, I am with my slide of oomph to tomb. Just to say what and conflict is like a mother when she is uh, just now before my starting of the lecture yeah i have told you ek bahu jab ghar aati hai usko puri tarah se aadar se ghar mein laate hain but with few dominations or with few separations for example she is dominated continuously she is hypothyroid uh, thyroidism is seen in the pregnant ladies where the child suffers with cretin right or she is being separated from the husband and then with that separation conflict she develops some other disease and the womb is carried forward like we have many examples today we see more cases of such where mentally retarded children are there where they are aggressive children many many and many we can't just uh, give one example like even uh, even if i say uh, Simple empathy conflict also, uh, also disturbs a pregnant lady. Recently, I have been into an empathy conflict. You know, what is empathy conflict? When someone is suffering, when someone is directly suffering to that, we just take their suffering and we start brooding. You know, recently, the actor Shushant, my goodness, he was such a wonderful actor and he is no more. Maybe if he would have been connected to GNM, maybe the constellation would be corrected by our GNM therapist and maybe you wouldn't have committed suicide. So empathy conflict also affects a person and the direct conflict also affects a person. Why I am showing you this womb to tomb is because we, I, have been, uh, I have been going through the website many a terms, le learning gnm.com because we are going for the translation and all. I have seen n number of conflicts in that. My goodness, how many from morsel conflict, indigestible saw morsel conflict. In the recent case of mine, a little girl's case which I have presented to you, the indigestible morsel conflict she had. You remember? Her first sim symptom was constipation. Yes. Then again, what happened? Then her mother said she had an typhoid, that is gastroenteritis. What is that? That is the territorial anger conflict because she is a left-handed. Then again, after that, she suffered with a separation conflict because her father got married to some other lady and he has left the family. He is being separated from the daughter. She had developed the spin rashes and the fourth conflict which that girl suffered is devaluation conflict. See, the conflicts, if I am showing you the list over here, there are n number of conflicts. In my due course of all my sessions, I will be explaining you one one conflict very clearly where if any person is also conflicted, you would be able to help them come out easily. Yes, doctors? So, the psyche, the brain and the corresponding organ are three levels of one unified organism that always works in synchronicity. This we know very well. The brain, the psyche and the corresponding organ. We have been learning GNM, right? As Dr. Hammer says, many of us 
will at one time another experience a conflict and get cancer but that is a normal part of life and not such a bad thing at all once one understands the principles of fire biological laws we can uh, we can just come out of the conflict to khub teer maar sakte hain apan right yeah this was the case which we have uh, gone through doctors you know about this right just coming to the coming to the first biological law it is an only a brush up we are doing it is an sudden of guard un act unexpected conflict which is named as brick hammer syndrome a biological conflict shock that catches like a lightning and when it catches like a lightning both all the three faces suffer that is first in the psyche in the brain and then the corresponding organ this is very well known to you and what happens over here but what is the compensation it is doing friends let me say in gnm there is no name called disease it is only the special biological program that is only the compensation only the felicity only to facilitate the organ to recover to heal up right here we have seen this lady who is being conflicted the subject is suddenly conflicted over here i have told you let me let me stress my words over here every sbs runs synchronously on the level of the psyche the brain and the corresponding organ and instantly a significant biological special program activates to assist healing here friends i i particularly say that it is uh, it is assisting whatever the biological program is happening in the body is only to assist yes when we speak about the brain psyche the organ correlation for example you see here in this diagram conflict shock impact we let, let us consider as an separation conflict or an death fright conflict what happens so here what is the a uh, loss you are so going to see if it is an death fright conflict then you see an cell proliferation for more air right and separation conflict again you see the significant biological special program is activated to assist the organism in coping up with the regular conflict situation what happens for instance when you have seen in the previous slide you have seen there is a tissue loss for example i have uh, the other day i have told the girl sudden separation conflict she had the officer uh, i mean the husband has uh, told that she he is going to divorce then it may be an sexual conflict it may be an starvation conflict or it may be an separation conflict so here what happens when it is an sexual conflict If the uh, less tissue required to facilitate and conflict resolution that is meaningful tissue loss uh, appears over here that is the cervix the tissue loss is there to accommodate a meaningful tissue loss is seen over here in the conflict active phase i'm just brushing up the first uh, first law uh, biological law of the conflict yeah what is it we see here conflict active phase meaningful tissue loss cervix uterus sexual conflict is seen and the tissue loss in the in the compass of gnm we see the two the, uh, the tissue loss and the proliferation right it is only an compensation for healing friends as homeopaths we really need to focus on our organ on and philosophy which has been explained now more than 200 years back by hanuman if we know the knowledge then we would be the perfect practitioners like let me read out the third and fourth aphorism which is very important in this juncture right he must investigate what to be cured and what is curative to be able to adapt the later to the former he is likewise a preserver of health if he knows the things that derange health and cause disease and how to remove them from person in health then he understands how to treat 
judicially and rationally and he is a true practitioner of healing heart this i have been telling in my last webinars also a, a doctor is a preserver of the health it is not only that he should give the medicine and then only the patient should get corrected he should always have the knowledge why this has occurred will it take its normal course of healing or shall i give some medicine you may question me if uh, if uh, the patient uh, being an homeopath if you are not going to give the medicine definitely we will give the medicine doctors you know what is the medicine we give right don't forget that right one more thing i would like to hello yeah one more thing i would uh, uh, like to share here is a case where uh, dr vijay kar sir has only told a patient was uh, having loose motions with the pain of the men for one or two days and he couldn't get up from the bed and the second day evening he says uh, sir i had so much problem i was unable to come to you i can't come to you and in the second day evening he says now i am bit better and i am coming to you so you know what is the medicine you need to apply to such cases right so the nature has its own course of treating there is an vast defense mechanism in your body which is been bestowed by the god by the nature so once that passes away everything settles even with the without the medicine so what is the quality of an uh, uh, health provider that is the preserver the doctor the practitioner is to have and complete knowledge of the element from how it has how it has come how will it be cured will it be cured and what is to be applied okay doctors with this short word i am again back to my gnm lecture from homeopathy right coming to the second biological law every biological special program runs in two phases provided there is a resolution of the conflict yes friends there is a resolution of conflict see suddenly we see a few people before going out they are so and they are with so much anxiety they run for pee they become cool and then after some time once they are set into the into the uh, work they are cool that is to understand that there are two phases of resolution if something is going high it will definitely come down that is the law of nature we need to know right second biological law i am repeatedly reading it so that it gets registered in your brain every sbs significant biological program runs in two uh, two phases provided there is an resolution of the conflict if there is an resolution of conflict the normal the natural uh, system the body takes care and everything is settled down for example if a if a mother says ma'am yesterday my son had been to school but uh, the moment he is back from the school he has so much fever that he is so tired he is sleeping he is with fever and all so what is that is happening fever is not an harmful thing he has some conflict in the school and he has come back home he is trying to pacify his conflict by himself wait and watch let's go further to discuss more about this yeah here you see the brain the psyche and the organ that is the brain level conflict active phase you see the uh, uh ring the target uh, uh, ring in the ct scans of dr hammer who has given shown us of course honestly i don't know about it but i am just uh letting you know what it is the organ suffered and you have an hh foci over there right and the healing phase i'll i'll go into detail with the, uh, for this friends here we uh, i spoke in the beginning of my lecture about the rhythmicity right rhythmicity unknowingly in our body the autonomic nervous system does so many functions like i am breathing i am breathing i am seeing you i am doing something over here this is all done done in a programmed way 
that is in a normal way you call it normotonia you get up in the morning you go to pee you work you go to work you come in the evening you sleep again you you get up this is the rhythm which you need to maintain like you are eating eating you don't say your stomach yes i have eaten you digest no you don't say your rectum and anus no now you can go no it is happening everything in a rhythm because it is going along with the time that is all normotonia where our vegetative functions are working right like sleeping thirst hunger respiration circulation your heart pumping this is all very nicely maintained by your nervous system without your voluntary involuntary that may be the right answer a right right word i mean so what happens what is normotonia i have told you what is sympatheticotonia let me explain you sympatheticotonia is you get up in the morning usually when do we get up i get up by 4 o'clock i do all the household chores rush to my clinics and by again in the afternoon have my lunch by evening session everything is closed the moment it is closed we are all so tired we have a bit of dinner and then we sleep right so what happens in sympatheticotonia you have lots of adrenaline rush right where sympathetic and parasympathetic i know you you uh, you all know that adrenaline and vagus both they work so uh, so what happens here with the rushing subah utho bachcho ko nashta banao college ko bhejo phir khud ke liye khana banao clinic jao patient dekho when we are doing all this it is the adrenal rush is there and what happens the sympathetic nervous system is working in the background and by the evening everything is settled you are pe- you are at peace you come back home to relax then your vagotonia starts what happens in vagotonia you relax but if a person is conflicted let me give you one example again uh, friends like uh, a person has gone to the office and he is uh, working suddenly there is some issue in the office and he is stressed out what happens he comes home very sad melancholic he sleeps he uh, he doesn't like eating he says i'm not interested in eating don't disturb me let me sleep this is the disturbance he is having he sleeps then if he is trying to resolve his own conflict which has happened in the office definitely he the vagotonia that is a prolonged phase he gets up the next morning by 3 o'clock he is attentive do you know something about the brahma muhurt in uh, our philosophy 3 from 3 the brahma muhurt starts in age old days people would say whatever you are thinking whatever you are planning whatever you are doing brahma muhurt mein jo vichar karte ho jo jo aalochna karte hain wo kaam sahi hota hai so he is very restless he he cannot sleep whole night he is with conflict and at three if he sits to decide the what is to be done then the resolution is automatically done for that person but if he is still hanging lagging what is it i have been ousted from the job what will i do what can i do then the same psyche which is been uh, hit with the conflict prolongs let me explain you this with the slides here the chart is here where you see every sbs in two phase pattern change of vegetative rhythm is important criterion in conflict active phase that is the vegetative functions normotonia balanced day and night rhythm sympatheticotonia alternates with vagotonia during day and normal sympatheticotonic state of stress during sleep normal vagotonic state of rest sympatheticotonic phase from 4 to 8 pm that's what i said from 4 to 8 pm we are all rushing moving forward to achieve right and when we are we, when we fail in these achievements then the conflict starts what happens to 
So normotonia, sympatheticotonia, and vagotonia are the three phases. In atomic nervous system, controls vegetative functions like sweating, respiration, digestion, excretion, constriction of blood vessels, and heart beat. That is all unknown to us, which goes involuntary. We don't even know that we are breathing. We don't even know that heart is pumping unless there is some some this ease that is some e this ease i'm not telling this ease okay right so what happens over here in conflict active phase the prolonged sympathetic uh, cotonia preoccupation the person is preoccupied with the conflict which he has suffered sleep disturbances little appetite and cold extremities he becomes very cold when we are anxious when we are with anxiety what happens we lose ourselves we become very cold i i know uh, uh, in when i have been to austria caroline was telling to see whether the person is in conflict active phase or uh, not this given shake hand but corona has put us very far namaste is better than shake hand because giving and shake hand to a person you will know his palms are cool or not whether he is in conflict active phase or He is resolving himself, right? So, conflict active phase is also called as cold phase, right? What happens over here? Uh, like I have told, sleep disturbances here and all. Now, coming to the healing phase. Healing phase is also called as warm phase. It is a prolonged phase, vagotonic, prolonged vagotonic phase over here. he has an emotional relief the fatigue is there after the emotional relief he is so fatigued appetite and fever right friends let me just explain my example only uh, for gnm i always run i always run i i i say whatever i know i need to tell uh, everyone and do for the first gnm session which was organized by satyanarayan bhutada sir i was rushing with my slides doing all everything my goodness i was in conflict whether i could deliver my lecture properly or not because it was in the medical college where nursing and doctors everyone were attending my session i was i was very conflicted maybe if i can't do this what would happen what would happen what would happen but the session was has gone very nicely everything was nice i that was all the conflict active phase doctors uh, where pathetic tonia in my body was running like anything uh when i was i mean i i did not show any of those symptoms while talking or lecturing but as i do want to make any mistakes so after coming home my goodness i was so tired so tired vagotonic literally literally i was uh, i couldn't eat anything properly i said did i give my lecture properly how did people appreciate me what i was just i was just thinking about the a uh, thing which was running in my brain continuously and after that everything was cooled and i was flat fatigue and all epileptoid crisis after that situation i am unable to get up i am unable to do i have discussed this with asif sir and uh, butada sir my goodness after my lecture uh, i am really totally uh, fatigue and tired then they said simply to नजर लग गया बेटे आप कुछ भी नहीं होगा यू जस्ट रिलैक्स नो नीड ऑफ एनी मेडिसिन दैट वाज आसिफ सर हैज सेड एंड असमा मैडम आल्सो हैज सेड दैट नहीं वो बहुत अच्छा किया है इसलिए नजर लगा है देन द एपिलेप्टॉइड क्राइसिस द नेक्स्ट डे मॉर्निंग आई वाज फाइन वेरी फाइन डूइंग थिंग्स बैक टू नॉर्मल सो दैट इज द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट व्हेन यू कैरी इट इट इज प्रोलॉन्ग एंड देन slowly it subsides and gets corrected by itself as i have already told you i have shown you this slide what hammer says complications don't arise from high fever but due to an enlarged brain edema friends just now i have said a child has come back from the uh, from the school and he has suddenly he has developed fever the mothers are more caring and uh, the maybe the child will resolve the situation and next day morning he would be fine but what happens the mother beside him she is keeps sponging him she keeps saying oh god what happened to you what happened to you to 
then his conflict plus empathy conflict both come together and the suffering increases the resolution doesn't continue okay the result uh, the what do you say it is not resolved properly so here dr hammer says one thing complications don't arise from high fever but due to the large edema why this edema dr hammer if if the patient has been made aware of all the facts he will no longer need to be frightened by his symptoms he can only fully accept these as an healing symptoms they are all of which had until now caused fear and panic in the greatest number of cases the whole episode will pass without any serious consequences right friends hope you have caught me here once a person is conflicted if you just assist him to resolve the conflict it would not be a big bomb for him right a, like uh, like i have explained my my uh, own experience just now after my after my uh, session i was resting in an what do you say a big barrel like i was totally uh, uh, if uh, asif sir or butar sir will uh, would be nice to explain you that i was literally out and out fatigued after the session so how did i resolve myself a simple word a simple uh, counseling saying that nazar lag gaya bete kuch bhi nahi hoga theek ho jayenge the next day morning again i was ready for all my clinics the same thing is here which hammer says if the patient has been made aware of the facts he will no longer need to get frightened by his symptoms he can only fully accept these as an healing symptoms they are because whatever happens in the psyche it is only assisting your uh, body your organ to be saved all of which had until now caused fear and panic in the greatest number of cases the whole episode will pass without any serious consequences and the resolution is quickly given right the healing phase pcl is equal to post conflict to lysis with the resolution of the conflict the autonomic nervous system switches into lasting vagotonia uh, vagotonia and a prolonged state of rest with fatigue but good appetite accompanying symptoms are a slow pulse and low blood pressure during vagotonia the blood vessels expand causing warmness yes when we are in sympathetic otonia what happens the constriction takes place we are rushing to do something the constriction in the blood vessels is there and therefore the coldness in the arms and soles the body we feel but but during vagotonia the blood vessels are relaxed expand causing warm hands and a warm skin we therefore call healing phase also a warm phase the psyche is in an state of great rest and relief what is it we see over here pcl a brain level what happens impact of the dhs in the brain sudden impact of the dhs on the brain slight damage to the neurons of specific brain relay because brain is the mediator of the psyche and the body right you call it as a control station you call brain as a control station which is the mediator of both the psyche and the organ right the body the parallel to healing of psyche and organ affected neurons also undergo restoration process right when the what happens over here the when the healing is going it is not only healing in the organ all three levels again they combine together and the healing process starts that is the psyche and the organ affected neurons also undergo restoration process of healing if more tissue is required to facilitate a conflict resolution the corresponding organ generates cell proliferation during a conflict active phase this process applies to all organs and tissues that are controlled by brain stem and cerebellum such as lungs liver pancreas colon thyroid or breast glands in embryological terms these organs derive from the endoderm or from the old mesoderm when we talk about the proliferation 
we have taken an example of scare fright conflict. I mean, death fright conflict, where the lung, the lung is in a great stress. What happens in the lung? The proliferation starts. That is to accommodate more air. Again, resolve for that. In the tissue, in the one second, yeah. If if less tissue is required to facilitate a conflict resolution, the organ or tissue corresponds with cell loss. This process applies to all organs and tissues that are controlled from the cerebral medulla and the cerebral cortex, such as the bones and joints, ovaries, testicles, coronary arteries, coronary veins, cervix bronchi, larynx, and the skin. In the embryological terms, these organs derive from a new mesoderm or from the ectoderm. Hope I'm clear with what I'm telling. Yes, let me tell you. If there is an conflict associated with such organs, what, is, what happens? The cell tissue is required to facilitate the conflict. Less tissue is required to facilitate the conflict. As in my uh, one of my cases I have discussed where a girl had a sexual conflict. In such a situation, what happens? The cervix where she had an ugly conflict and she couldn't, she couldn't uh, impl implantation conflict, ugly conflict, uh, whatever that is, figurative to the perception of the person. What happens over there? The cervix is eroded. Why is it eroded? It is only to facilitate, it is only to accommodate the meat, right? Uh, this, this, I think this is the best example which, uh, which we can understand uh, uh, speaking about the loss conflict. Or if we are speaking about the devaluation conflict, the bones and the joints come here, you see osteoporosis or you see when uh, any every patient they come and say, Madam, our bones and our they all come. What is this? They are, the conflict over here is the devaluation conflict. And what is happening over here is less tissue is required. So facilitation, it is being eroded, eroded. In PCLA, a sharp target friends see the conflict here you can see uh, friends. Uh, in this, um, what do you call, I'll just, um, yeah, here, do you, uh, do, uh, can you see here, the ring around over here, which I'm showing you in the, uh, in the pic, is uh, in PCLA, the sharp target rings, the submerged in the edema presented on the CT scan or uh, as dark hypodense with PCLB water retention is also here. So water is the medium of medium of cure, resolution, right? Water retention is seen here. Due to Ann syndrome, increases the size of the edema, right? This CT shows a brain edema in the control center of the lung alveoli, which reveals that death fright conflict has been resolved. So salute to Dr. Hammer, who has studied these uh, CTs and who has shown as the part that what is happening in our brains, right, has been resolved. Most death rights are triggered by cancer diagnosis shock. Yes, friends, let me share one thing. Why is this happening? Suddenly, a person is diagnosed with HIV, okay? You all know that it is in the conventional medicine system, they say, Every HIV patient will get tuberculosis. So let's understand from their perception of the conventional medicine system. What is that which happens? The person when he is diagnosed, means ACE has become very common now, but in our, um, when the cases were fresh and all, what happened? When a person was diagnosed with uh, HIV, the first thing is death fright conflict. What happens to this person? He definitely lands up with a tuberculosis. That is not bad. Actually, tuberculosis, the mycobacteria over there, the microbes over there are helping this person. He is in a death fright, right? He's in a death fright of being diagnosed. Diagnostic 
diagnostic shock. What? The God has aided, the nature has aided, it has multiple cells which assist us. And from that, the microbes for which are with us, living with us since millions of years of the humankind, when the man is on the earth, the microbe is also along with him. It is, it is both vice versa, isn't it? So what happens to this HIV patient? He, the, the moment he is diagnosed, he says, oh, my to mar hi jaunga, mujhe HIV aa gaya. That is the diagnostic shock. The conflict which he doesn't know. Many people have many disorders, but they don't know. Many uh, females carry fibroids in their uterus. Many females have PCODs. Many females have like, uh, what do you say? The, um, many things. Uh, I, mean, I mean, lose my time. I'll speak. What happens over here? Immediately for the HIV patient, a tuberculosis is diagnosed. But the conventional medicine, what it does? It immediately gives a prescription of anti-tubercular drugs. Uh, uh, my example is clear, I hope. So we are not allowing the patient to resolve himself, himself where the microbes, the bacteria, the tubercular bacteria has come to the assistance of the HIV person, but the conventional medicine gives an anti-tubercular drug and thereby everything is closed. So he is continuously suffering with HIV and the diagnostic shock, right? This CT shows a brain edema in the control center of the lung alveoli, which reveals that the death fright conflict has been resolved. Most death frights are triggered by a cancer diagnosis shock. It cannot, it, it's not only a cancer, friends, any syphilitic disorder, any autoimmune disorder, any uh, HIV, whatever uh, we take, the person suddenly goes into a diagnostic shock. What happens over here? In PCLA brain, in the level of brain, what happens? Swelling of the brain edema, cerebral healing symptoms like dizziness and headache starts. Okay? If it, is, if it is not resolving what is happening, we are just going through it. Headaches of PCLA is dull pressure headaches after epileptoid crisis in PCLP. Brain edema expelled. Mechanical pulling of meninges, sharp stabbing pain in headache, right? Happens. So what we need to see here, PCA, PCA brain level, migraine headaches, start only in healing phase and most in intense during epileptoid crisis. Even we see in small cases where, they, where the patient goes into scissors, that is the epilepsy, okay? Involve predominantly premotor sensory, sensory cortex. The epileptoid crisis is a significant biological counter regulation. Dr. Hammer therefore, strongly advises not to take antispasmodic or sedative medication during this period in order not to interrupt this highly critical event. Sedatives administered at that point could cause a person to fall into a coma, right? Just now I have explained you of a person coming from office, he is, he is having a headache, he has, been, he has been affected with the conflict in the office and leave him to rest automatically settles. But if you are going to interfere with that, saying that you take an uh, aspirin, you take a desprin or you take some painkiller or something and something, a hammer strongly advises not to take any antispasmodic or sedative medication. Friends, I, uh, I, uh, let me tell you one thing. Sedation is also not advised for the patients who have these uh, asthma problems, bronchial problems, all these things also. Uh, conventional medicines, immediately they give them antihistamines, all that which are sedatives, right? Epileptoid crisis, biological purpose to expel edema both on organ and in correlating brain relay. What is happening in epileptoid crisis we see here? The uh, edema is to be expelled, okay? 
it relieves brain pressure epicrisis followed by urinary phase body eliminates all excess fluids yes just as i said the the next day morning we get up and we pee we pee everything is settled right if edema completely expelled because of syndrome water retention or due to conflict relapses residual edema remain until biological special program is completed there is a residual edema is there in the brain unless the complete resolution is not done that is not clear in pcla brain swelling of the brain edema cerebral healing symptoms like dizziness headache i have already told you headaches pcl dull pressure headaches are seen after epileptoid crisis if that is not healed what happens and scarification happens brain edema expelled and scarification happens mechanical pulling of meninges sharp pain stabbing headaches let me just give you one example uh, friends again over here suddenly you have and burnt with an water a scald is found what happens immediately the scald is formed on your on your arm and what is that which is controlling which is uh, uh, which is um, protecting the edema the blood which we see which which has an water in it the viscosity material which protects that skin until the that is healed but if we interrupt if we interrupt with that bleb which comes bolte hai na jab kisi ko burn injuries hota hai pani gir gaya ya chai gir gaya to wahan ek gubbara ban jata hai wo gubbara agar apne aap ekdam dheema pad gaya settled ho gaya to the healing is done very nicely but wahi gubbara agar aapne us pe pani dala ya usko chhed karke uski uska pani jo nikala then what happens you see an scar over there it is the same thing i'm just i'm just telling you a smaller smaller level of explanation and here we are seeing the bigger level of explanation explanation in the brain where the edema is formed to clear to resolve that particular conflict uh, area but if it is not doing the scar formation is there in the in the brain that is the ct hope my example has not confused you because i'll tell you once again pani agar garam garam pani kisi ke kisi ke haath pe ya pad pe kahin bhi gir gaya hai to foran kya hota hai waha ek gubbara ban jata hai apne aap ek blab ban jata hai banne se that is the way it, the body is trying to resolve it is trying to protect itself right if that is completely protected automatically the underlying skin everything is the, everything the uh, the mechanism the healing mechanism is completed and the gubbara goes but once we interfere with that or uh, the interference is it can be the other conflict or it can be the aspiration we are trying to prick it we are trying to incise it then what happens a scar form a scar is formed it is the same thing in the brain okay the second part of the healing phase is pcl b passing the epileptoid crisis is like turning and corner now the organism enters the second part of the healing phase or pcl b that is scarification phase yes scarring occurs predominantly through the production of collagen manufactured by specialist cells called fibroblasts located in the connective tissue around the healing area by the end of the biological program the original function of the organ is restored and and the day and night rhythm returns to normal tonia yes the simple scar over there returns everything and the patient is back to health this is this is an self de self designed program of the body right friends we have discussed here about uh, this uh, girl who has been uh with so many conflicts and all maybe i have uh, made decent slides to share everything and i would be explaining every conflict uh how it goes and uh i have also explained the right handedness with uh, many examples i'll put forth in my future lectures 
and I will also speak on biological handedness. Hello. No audio is there. Yeah, hello, uh, Jane, sir. The no audio is there. Is yeah, there just, a, just, just a moment. Just a moment, sir. I had a talk with uh, Gayatri, madam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Audio yeah. is not clear. Yeah, now it is okay, madam. Okay, right. Uh, are you able to see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kindly share yeah. the screen, madam. Yeah. With that, uh, with that maybe... Uh, I'll be ending today's session and uh, we will be continuing it in uh, uh, future course of our sessions. My screen sharing is also suddenly, yeah, it is gone. Okay. Yeah. What shall we do? Okay, madam, no issues. Uh, yeah. I'm doing the coming with session. That, yeah. With that, uh, there is some uh, uh, technical problem over here, I think, uh, friends. For today, one second, please hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to share my screen. Yeah, the session will be continued in the next time where I will be explaining the importance of the microbes and the third biological law and the quietness, which is the first, uh, fourth biological law. Uh, uh, fifth biological law in a course of action, right? This mine has got stuck. It's not one second. With this, some technical problem. I thank one and all for joining me for this wonderful session. Uh, we will yeah, continue the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. We'll see in the coming yeah. session, madam. Thank you very much, doctors. There is some technical problem. Bye bye with that. And namaste bye, to madam. all. Namaste. Bye. 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 bye.